cool, I guess. I'll take Jaggy. What? What did you do a skeleton? Welcome back to my personal quest to see if I can find a fighting game worthy of dethroning Criticom as the worst I've ever played. Yeah! And I will do this by swimming through a sea of endless trash! Last time, we put the N64 classic citation needed dual heroes to the test, and honestly, it was a milk toast effort at worst. Let's just leave it alone now, it's not hurting anybody. This week, though, thanks to fans down at the Flophouse VIP Patreon who voted in an exclusive poll, I'm going to be braving a perilous jungle. A jungle that contains a jaguar. Yes, I own this, and I only own the bad fighting games that were made for this, which means, you know, all of them. Anyway, this jag here has been sitting on my floor for like two, four years, and I've barely ever found a good use for it. So let's all find a good use for it with the game that you all voted for. Kasume Ninja. One of the most infamous entries in the JAGS library, fighting or otherwise. Released in 1994, published by Atari themselves, and developed by a studio that I've never heard of, uh, Handmade Games? Is that right? Um, it, well, they were based in the UK, and all they've ever done is games for consoles named after cats. And surprise, surprise, this was their first and last fighting game. Obviously, if you're making a fighter and it's 1994, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to be ripping off Mortal Kombat. And rip off Mortal Kombat, they did! They dressed up some poor palookas under some hot studio lights and had them do all types of silly shit. In terms of its setup, well, it's pretty par for the course. If by par for the course, you mean ripping off Mortal Kombat. For many generations, rumors have persisted of a small, well-hidden island known as Kasumi, which has produced the world's most renowned ninjas. With the help of the preeminent Celestials, the island is kept shrouded in secrecy. An impenetrable wall of mist surrounds the island, making it undetectable to modern technology. All your life, you have trained in body and spirit at the only home you have known, the Dragon Cloud Temple on Kasumi Island. At the temple, you are trained by the elders, a group of three wise and powerful ninjas. This group of elders consists of he Hei, who embodies the light aspects of human nature, Kaio, who embodies the aspect of indifference, and Gyaku, who embodies the darker side of human nature. The balance of good and evil is what keeps the portal to the netherworld closed. With this power, Gyaku could destroy Earth. Now you are sure it is your destiny to defeat Go Goku, close the gate to the netherworld, and restore balance to the universe. The Celestials cannot help you directly, but they have blessed you with the power of absorbing others' abilities. To gain these abilities, you must defeat a variety of champ- What a load of bollocks! Kasumi Ninja was, uh, not very well regarded in 1994 at all, but it was originally going to be pretty different. Handmaid's original plan was to make something more unique, featuring a robust roster of 20 characters and have a completely different art style. That is, until Atari apparently butted in and asked for a quick MK clone instead. This was all revealed by a former staff member at Handmaid Games who had no qualms throwing Atari under the proverbial bus, but since all these companies are you know, don't exist, it was probably a low level of risk for him. Part of his vitriol probably had to do with the fact that while Kasumi Ninja actually sold well enough to warrant a sequel, and Atari set them to work on said sequel, what the struggling company failed to mention was that they were struggling, like, like, bankruptcy struggling, and folded as a console-making entity just a few months after Kasumi Ninja 2 had been greenlit although Atari's arcade division still lingered on. Handmade, with no one left to pay them for all the work they had done, were then forced to close their own doors. 
this cruel fate actually befell several in development Jaguar games, including an AVP sequel and even an Atari published port of MK3. All of them started, but never released. Today though, Kasumi Ninja is only kept alive by residual views of AVGN's review of the Jaguar console itself. How I assume that's the reason why most of you even voted for this digitized disaster. But that's not to say that Kasumi Ninja hasn't earned its fair share of ire, even back in the day. In fact, I can only find one surviving old score from Game Informer, funnily enough, which slapped Kasumi Ninja with an embarrassing 10% on game rankings. In terms of other 90s publications, well, from what I've been able to glean, it wasn't much better elsewhere. On the internet in 2021 though, Kasumi Ninja has been awarded the fourth worst MK ripoff, placed in UGO's 102 worst games ever, and Complex.com's worst fighting game, etc, etc. But we won't know how truly bad it is until we get it in the ring! Alright, so as per usual, we are starting off with a presentation, which includes lots of great stuff like characters, which will probably have not great stuff like the characters that are in Kasumi Ninja. I do have to say big ups for this uh, particular main menu screen. It makes it known what it's, it's advertising, what it is. It's a simple silhouette of character with a bunch of MS Paint blood dripping down. I like, I like the honesty. Here. Okay, so here's a pretty infamous bit. You walk around and touch statues to pick your character. <laughs> from from Kasumi Ninja. To select um your opponent, you have to go around in this really bad chugging first person sort of thing. P points for originality. You know, uh, no game would do this because why would you do this? It's very stupid, but I'm glad that they did it. You know, I've seen so many character select screens, some good, some bad, some in between, and they 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 tried to do something. Whether it was good or not is is up for debate. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm holding a ja Jaguar controller. So we'll just here's Habaki. Um, that is the most basic ninja you can have. Uh, not great. Um, I do appreciate getting a, um, you know, for in terms of presentation, I do really think it's cool to, to get the profiles right off the bat so you know who you're going to be fighting against. Habaki is the eldest twin of the Kira Ga Kure family. Both brothers are extremely competitive. Brothers, eh? So that's Habaki. Uh, who's the other? Here's the other ninja sw uh, palette swap. And Senzo, and there's, they didn't even do a stance change. Like Scorpion and Sub-Zero and MK1 had a stance, come on. Senzo is the youngest twin of the Kiriga Kure family. The two brothers are equally adept at the arts. Like, like, like drawing comic books? The oil painting? Sensual pot making? What, 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 what is the arts exactly? You should think it would say martial arts. I, I guess I can only be one of these uh, uh, characters. I don't know which one was better. I'll just, I'll just go. I'll be Okay, okay. So now we can get a... <laughs> this character. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Alright. This is Alaric. Alaric, King of Gods. <laughs> I mean, he looks like he looks like Gary Spivey of the Psychic Companions Network. Uh, all right, all right. That's that's Alaric. Uh, who do we have next? Uh, this is a chick in bikini. It's a chick in a bikini. She's Thundra, her style's feral, and her rhyming's fresh. <laughs> Thundra is the queen of a lost tribe of Amazon warriors. She has trained uh, she has trained her warriors in an art in an art handed down for generations. They just they keep saying art. Like I you know, it could be anything. Uh, so not good so far, although these two characters are super lame. One of those ninjas that we took, one's fine, but they're both lame and they don't even look like cool ninjas. Again, Mortal Kombat is a- Here's the fucking star of the show. 
Angus, because of course he is. Uh, Styles brawling Angus McGregor. Is he like Conor McGregor? Is just super overhyped to kind of a dick. Is the blacksmith of the village Locke Katrine. Angus discovered at an early age that he loved to brawl, so he's also a brawler. Now I have to this is this is the star of the show, like I said. I I'll, I'll give him points uh, just for originality here and kind of silliness. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, like uh, groundskeeper Willie would like to fight. I get that. It, it makes sense to have him in, in a maybe not like a Street Fighter style game, but like a Mortal Kombat silly digitized thing, like ripoff game. I could see that. So Angus gets a slide. I mean, a pass. <laughs> he gets a slide too. I don't even know what that means. Pakawa. This has to be a wrestler, like an actual wrestler that they just they just put in front of a green screen. His style is wrestling, shockingly enough. He's 210? I don't believe that at all. That guy's pushing like 275. Pakawa is chief of the Kam Kamenchi fighting tribe, Tuwika. Pakawa is proud of the number of scalps. He has clucked. That's enough of that. Um, this is 94, folks. Uh, not a fan of Pakawa. Danja. Danja, she her style is street fighting, which is a catch-all term. Catch as catch can. Uh, by day, Danja Retta is an assassin. DA by night, she is a vigilante. Fighting in a different court. <laughs> That's a pretty good line. I don't mind that. Again, pretty lazy with this character design. She's just in a cat suit with a bunch of boob windows. Like, she's got like four or five boob windows. <laughs> you only needed one, okay? This character roster, not looking good. Let's see. Let's see if we can find uh, a winner to go alongside Angus. Because right now, he's the front runner. Jackie. Jaggy. Um, he's kickboxing. At least that's the style. Uh, Jaggy Nelson. <laughs> Five times world kickboxing champion has never lost a professional bout. Well, that's impressive. I mean, that's okay. I, I kind of expect a character to look like this, like a Ryu or, or a Liu Kang. Um, at least he has a little bit more visual variety going on with him than Liu Kang. But in, like, Mortal Kombat 1 Liu Kang, not Mortal Kombat 2, or certainly not 3, who has a bit more style on him. So Jaggy's kind of a pass. Uh, not great, though. Not not great. Um, that's it. Oh, that's the roster for for Kasumi Dinsha. So who are we gonna fight? It's got it's got to be Angus, right? It has to be. And then maybe after that, Thundra. I have no idea. This is the first time I've ever actually played Kasumi Ninja, uh, so I don't know if uh, how far we can even get in the story mode. But we're gonna try. We're gonna we're gonna try hard. Uh, we need to suss out the rest of what this game uh, provides in in the presentation and aesthetics uh, department, especially those backgrounds. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I think. All right. I like that. It's kind of neat. That's a shit versus screen. I have to say. Why is it called Jaguar? Oh, I'm fighting the computer. The Jaguar. Holy shit. We're just fucking going. So, okay. Um, it, the game doesn't look good. So we have uh, katana swords up there. They're dripping with blood. That I assume represents the damage I have incurred, I'm getting incurred a lot of damage. So the Jaguar was supposedly a 64-bit console. A lot of people know it, it really actually wasn't at all. Um, but this looks, you know, absolutely dreadful for 94. Like, you know, Mortal Kombat 3, uh, sorry, Mortal Kombat 2 came out in 1994. So you have to look at least as, you have to look at least as good as Mortal Kombat 1, and this certainly doesn't. And yeah, it's an old console, and I'm, I'm, rec I'm recording it off the actual hardware, but like this, this just looks awful. It could be like it's very washed out. Um, I mean, it's a little bit colorful. It has, it's it's just unappealing to look at. Now we're looking at the stage there. The stage looks not too bad actually. Jackie, it's not it's not written in the proper Jaggy the way that it should be written, like in Fist of the Door Star. Like that's not that's not as fun. It's got to have be with a J, soft J. All right, lots of Buddha statues. This actually doesn't look too bad. It, it, 
not bad at all, actually. The scrolling on the floor is is also a little bit impressive, especially for the time. It almost looks like a 3D arena. Uh, uh, definitely a little bit better than uh, Angus's stage. And I'm also noticing the blood actually stays on the floor. That's not even something Mortal Kombat anything. Maybe until Deception or like Deadly Alliance did. That's that's kind of neat. All right, let's see. let's see the King of Goths, Alaric. Okay, the, 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 all right. Um, so so this stage a little a little bit more muddy. Uh, you know, not not super great. Um, but I mean, it's simple. One good thing is don't have too many uh, objects in the foreground obscuring everything, and th that's fine. That completely makes sense. Uh, having those torches there uh, to give the the stage a little bit of depth. I've seen some fighting games that do that terribly, and this isn't one of them. All right. Well, here's here's Pakawa stage. All right. He's he's got to put his ass stomp. Great. Okay. Wow, I can't do anything about that. I don't know what I expected, you know, for for a First Nations character to be in a fighting game. They would probably always have a stage like this. So, so many of them kind of do. Ow! I will say that there's a very sort of naturalistic look to a lot of the stages. They they kind of feel as realistic as they could be rendered, you know, considering all the, the, the constraints and what they had going against them making this game and, you know, being on the fucking Jaguar. Can you know I select to leave? You need the key to the Dragon Cloud Temple before you can face Gyaku. Uh, so this game is actually brutally hard, uh, considering I'm also, you know, using a fucking Jaguar controller. What exactly is the final boss? Dreaded Kiaku is Gyaku Goku. Um, he's just he's just a gray ninja. I shouldn't be surprised. It, it is half of the game's title, after all. Oh no! Oh, he's got a second form, and now it's. The crab person? I don't even. It's it's a guy in red pajamas and he's got like a kaiju head. Okay, sure. Ooh, that's a good throw though. The the, the game story is so involved and way longer than it ever needed to be. So I better be blown away by the sending, whatever it is. All right, well, let's talk, unfortunately, a little bit about the gameplay. This is going to be a quick section, actually, because there's not much to say. Um, Kasumi Ninja uses three buttons. Now, the Jaguar actually has, like, uh, 15, 16 buttons, if you count the fucking keypad. Um, but this uses a punch, uses a kick, and then the C button, or fire, kind of does special moves. It's unclear. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I haven't quite figured out the movements yet, but I will. Um, uppercuts are weird. It's not actually ducking and punching. It's ducking, then holding between down and forward. So you're kind of doing like a Hadouken motion, but it results in a really slow uppercut. It's not great. Now, blocking is done by holding back, which is nice, but it, there's also, I don't know, it just seems like it's very delayed. Uh, aside from that, there's not any other real gameplay systems or even modes here. There's two player and then there's one player. Now, how does the one player story mode work? Well, all right, so what happens when you actually beat a character? He gets added to your roster. So I'm Senzo or Rabaki, doesn't matter. That's the only ninja I didn't take. And because I defeated uh, Jaggy, he's just added. Cool, I guess. I'll take Jaggy. <gasps> what? Why did he turn into a skeleton? I love it. I stole his stone skin. All right, I didn't know there was going to be a skeleton in here. So th there's a point in that. Wow, so that is a teleport. It's very slow, but it does get me out of like those situations. You do this by holding the C button and pressing up, up. Um, it, it, it takes a little while to do. That's a pretty funny effect though. That's kind of, that makes me smile. I'm trying to smile here. So that's a special move, this, this double kick. 
That's back, back, forward, forward. That is crazy for a standard special move like a hurricane kick. I don't know. I don't know if I can continue with this gameplay segment. I'm done. So here's the other mode in the game, the options mode. So here's the other mode in the game, the options mode. It's the, it's the only other thing it has. We can reveal the credits. Uh, we can turn on the story text. Uh, there is a parental lockout code for the blood. You can change the gore level to gore fest. What else? None. Combat. Disturbing. <laughs> That's actually pretty fun. That that makes me think that they're trying to make the best of it, you know, developing this. And they're like, let's let's just try to have some fun wherever we can by having this stupid 90s text. It's pretty funny. So like stated, the only other mode is two player versus and story. That puts it right in line with um with Criticom, but it doesn't make it worse than Criticom. Can I even, I don't even have a second Jaguar controller, thank God. I only want one of these. Uh, just, can I even start this? Dan, just sure. So I don't have a player two, and I'm stuck. Then the game is locked up, essentially. I would have to turn, turn off the power. Now I read that the number pad on a Jaguar, actually you can reset a game. Oh my god, this is such trash. Oh, I found it. I found the button combo. It's pressing two buttons at the same time. Whew. You know, what's the point in reviewing a Mortal Kombat ripoff game if I don't show the fatalities? Here you go. Keep your expectations low. Real low. All right, so we're gonna talk about game feel uh, now. And again, very, very short section because there's not much to say um, about it. it. It feels awful. It's definitely up there for one of the worst, and especially in terms of a digitized Mortal Kombat game, which I felt, you know, always feels stiff just because of uh, the nature of the animation, how it's captured. Um, what I can't fault this game for is being on the Jaguar. Like that's, that was out of its control. A Jaguar is the one fun, uh, a Jaguar. Yes, the Jaguar Corporation. The Atari is the one that funded this, so like, there's there's not much that can be done. And the Jaguar controller, uh, folks, like I, I know people have talked to, look at this D-pad, look at it. You need a priest to get rid of this thing. I can't impart to you how bad this controller is, really, for anything. I can't imagine anything controlling well on this. Least a lot of fucking fighting game. <sighs> Good, game over. I'm glad. Let's we need to wrap this up, people. Ugh, look, I'm I'm not gonna lie. This was a bit of a rough one. Just look at it. It kind of speaks for itself. However, the drudgery of actually having to play it, well, the onus is not entirely on handmade games here, as they got a raw deal, having to change their entire original design last minute to please Atari, and well, this is what they ended up with. While the modes, mechanics, and even the presentation are incredibly basic, there's at least some charm here and there, but the game feel is what really holds things back, and that's mostly due to the cursed eldritch object that is the Jaguar controller. And unlike the PlayStation, all of the Jaguar's fighting games are notoriously awful, so Kasumi Ninja doesn't really stand out in that regard. It's a stinky game in a giant, collective cloud of stink.
it shares a lot of similarities with Criticom and gets really close to being as unpleasant to play, but the blood, fatalities, silly special moves, and the shockingly impressive backgrounds just edge it out, making it the slightly better game. So I'm going to officially nestle Kasumi Ninja yeah, right under there in its own digitized pit of shame. You've earned it, buddy. And so that ends another worst fighting game as the winding road of my quest still beckons. But if you want to throw some pebbles, rocks, or explosive there. bricks on my path, shout out some bad fighting games in the comments below, and we'll see if one of the games you suggested can top the king of the shit heap, my beloved Critical Combat.